Hello and welcome to Art Snaps. I'm Katie and in this episode we're going to look at some stunning drawings from Swindon's collection by Gwen John and Augustus John. And this is partly because I ended my last Art Snap by talking about a drawing by Henry Moore and it made me think about what other works on paper Swindon has in its collection. Swindon Museum and Art Gallery holds a number of drawings, watercolours and monotypes by important modern and contemporary British artists. And some of these include pretty big names such as R.B. Kitai, John Nash, Walter Sickert and many, many more. And I've decided to chat about Gwen and Augustus John because there are some really interesting narratives bound up with their artworks, which make us think about the part played by art schools, um, as well as the importance of artistic license or individuality, and the interactions between portraitists and their sitters. And this last point is particularly relevant for Gwen and Augustus, who are both best known for their portraits, although their approaches were very, very different. And the reason I want to talk about them both today is because Gwen and Augustus were brother and sister artists who underwent the same upbringing and education, but who developed very different, almost contrasting careers and lifestyles. They grew up in Tenby in southwest Wales, where they were raised in a quiet, respectable middle class family but they would both break away from this quite conventional lifestyle and join the lively, sophisticated world offered by the Slade School of Art in London. Today I'm going to look at some early-ish drawings created by Gwen and Augustus which are held in Swindon's collection and the artworks I'm going to discuss are actually in storage at the moment so I'm glad we're getting the chance to look at them now. And I'm going to begin by talking a bit about Augustus John because he was the first to leave Tenby for the Slade. He studied there from 1894 to 98 and during that time he quickly began to earn the reputation of the rebellious bohemian artist for which he is now known. But it was not only his personality which made him popular, he was also an extremely talented draftsman and soon became star pupil at the Slade which placed drawing at the core of its teaching. His tutor, Henry Tonks, even credited him with being the best draftsman since Michelangelo. Swindon Museum and Art Gallery owns four works on paper by Augustus, the earliest of which is Four Figures in Classical Dress, which was created during his time as a student. We can't be certain what this scene represents, but the clothes and the authoritative bearded man could indicate a scene from the Bible. What we do know is that it demonstrates Augustus's great talent for rendering a scene through simple, expressive line, even at this early stage in his career. Check out the way he uses quick, fluid sweeps of the pencil to represent the robes, and the use of the wash to create light and shadow in the work, which is also significant, because here he was probably influenced by the 17th century Dutch Baroque artist Rembrandt, whom Augustus would have had the chance to study through a huge exhibition of the artist's work at the Royal Academy in 1899. The other piece by Augustus that I want to talk about is this lovely etching of William Butler Yeats, one of the most important figures of 20th century literature. And I want to talk about this because Augustus is now most celebrated for his single figure portraits. And this one was printed in 1919 from one of five etchings plates created in 1907 when Yeats was 42 years old. At this point, I do want to apologise for the less than ideal quality of the image, uh, which was the only one I had access to, but we can still appreciate that the work demonstrates Augustus's talent for capturing the character of his sitters. It also shows his rebellious tendency to subvert expectations. Um, Yeats commissioned the portrait to illustrate his collected poems, but it's known that he was actually quite apprehensive about hiring Augustus for the job, claiming that he made everyone look perfectly hideous. So why, I hear you ask, did Yeats ask him to do it then? Well, when it came to portraits of distinguished artists and writers, Augustus was really the main man to call. He was a popular chap and despite his tendency to be perhaps a little too truthful, he was likely the most famous British portrait painter at this time. But his honesty was slightly to his own detriment in this case. Though the portrait of Yeats is beautifully executed, the writer was not so keen and opted in the end for a more flattering portrait by John Singer Sargent. 
But the refusal of Augustus to execute an airbrushed image is really an indication of the presence and sincerity with which he wanted to present his sitters. The pensive look, shadowed face and slightly ruffled hair and clothing present a frank and relatable image of W.B. Yeats. Augustus's sister Gwen John is also known for her portraiture, though during their lifetime she was nowhere near as famous as Augustus. I'm glad to say that in recent years her work has become dramatically more appreciated, perhaps even more so than her brother's, but during her lifetime she was a quiet and restrained character who, when she joined the slaves slightly after Augustus, was happy to blend into the background whilst her young and eccentric brother took the limelight. Nevertheless, through her quiet dignity, she did find success as a young artist. She attended the sleigh between 1895 and 98, which provided a unique environment for young female artists. Actually, around two thirds of the school students were women, which provided them with, with an opportunity to socialise in a way that female students hadn't been able to before. And with its focus on drawing as the core skill for an artist, the slade also allowed women to attend still life drawing classes, whereas other art schools didn't. And we're also talking about the era of the new woman at the beginning of the 19th century, which saw women resisting conventional roles and striving for lives and careers of their own choice. And this was happening in a way that it hadn't really before. And women like Gwen John were ready to really strike out on their own. So Gwen was in a position of being able to learn the skills she needed to become an artist and benefit from the company of other women within progressive attitudes at the time. And I should also mention that the Slade was really one of the very few art schools at the time which were letting in women. And it's in this context that she created some incredibly intimate and moving images of women. Portrait of a Lady from Swindon's collection was created with pencil and wash on paper in 1910 and depicts Chloe Boughton Lay, who was John's artist friend who also attended the Slade. It's one of a series of at least 11 drawings which show her in the same clothes and hairstyle, but from different angles and with different facial expressions. Swindon's drawing depicts a strong, proud woman, whereas others show perhaps a more vulnerable side to the sitter. Perhaps the most extraordinary thing about this drawing is the artist's ability to capture so much with such an economical use of pencil and wash. Note how few lines she's used to represent the lips and eyes and wisps of hair around the face, yet such delicate and exquisite technique does not in any way restrict the psychological presence of the sitter. And I think her brother Augustus really kind of sums it up when he said that his sister's work was almost painfully charged with feeling, and I can't help but agree with that. And I would definitely recommend taking a look at her work, as well as Augustus's work on Art UK, so you can really kind of see to the, the full extent of, of what they were both doing with their portraiture. To round this one off then, I would say that when it comes to Augustus and Gwen John, no two people could be more different. One was a bold celebrity and the other a timid recluse. And the pieces we've seen today show evidence of working methods which would continue to blossom and give us two very different and important bodies of 20th century portraiture. And I'm going to end with that. Thank you very much for listening to Art Snaps and I really hope that you're able to join us again for our next episode, which will celebrate spring through a series of artworks from Swindon's collection. In the meantime, you can keep up to date with these podcasts as well as exciting blog posts and family activities offered through Art on Tour. Just follow our blog www.swindonmuseumandartgallery.org.uk slash art on tour or find us on Facebook by searching at Art on Tour 2020 and we're on Instagram at Swindon Gallery Art on Tour. Thank you very much, stay well and bye for now.